Howdy, Sky Blue Fox here, and welcome back to Let's Play Link to the Craft. Uh, off screen, I went to the Lost Woods and got that mushrooms, and uh, I picked up a fairy along the way, which I'll end up using uh, later on in the dungeon. Now, uh, this is the overworld. It's not really changed for the better or worse. Um, the graveyard is pretty much unchanged. In this, you're not really allowed to push the graves, not that there's really anything much hidden under them. There's only really two graves you ever need to pay attention to in this game or the other game. Um, one has the magic cape, which I believe I will try and get later on in the Let's Play. And the other one is a shortcut back into uh, the Hyrule Castle sewers. Now, the emptiness of this overworld is one of my biggest problems that I have with this map, but it's not really a problem with the map as it is a problem with Minecraft, because due to the fact that it's daytime, monsters don't spawn. Like you can hear monsters spawning, but they're spawning on that little green brick area that we saw last video instead of up top on the overworld. And this makes the overworld pretty boring to explore. Like, I know it's it's not really possible to fix it through, like, MC Edit or through uh, single-player commands. This is just something that's inherent to Minecraft. And as much as I dislike it, there's not much really that Amarok can do to fix this. So, if you really want more combat, then uh, you can skip uh, the spawn point beds and just play at night. You probably noticed the uh, maps with dialogue. Uh, I've shown those off in the other videos. But uh, that is how dialogue is done in this. It's interesting, I like it. It's neat. Now this is Sahasrala's house, the place we were supposed to be going to uh, according to the sanctuary and the people in Kakariko. And he's told us that we need to go to the Eastern Palace to get our first MacGuffin, the Pendant of Courage. Now in the original game there's actually a little wall you can bomb in the back of his house, uh, but that wasn't there, there wasn't even a cracked wall in there. Uh, substituted for that, once you finish the Eastern Palace, you can go back there and it will have opened up all on its own. And you can get the items. Now, Amarok graciously put in some beds at the beginning of dungeons, uh, so you can uh, have a spawn point there. So I wait until night, and then enter the dungeon. Now, it's pretty faithfully crafted. There are some bugs that do show up, and I'll point them out when they happen. But overall, it's a very good recreation of the dungeon. It's one of the more fun dungeons to play, though I think I prefer uh, the Hyrule Castle dungeon and sewers, and uh, the Desert Temple a little more. And again, this is because of the, uh, this is due to the same reason as the overworld, because the Eastern Palace and the Tower of Hera, the third dungeon we go to, they're both pretty well lit, so enemies don't really spawn that much in them, except in the rooms where spawns are controlled by, uh, pressure pads and dispensers. Now this puzzle is, I'm not sure if I'm alone on this, but this is generally the one puzzle everyone remembers from the du from this dungeon where uh, you have to uh, hide in these little alcoves to uh, not get hit by these large marbles, I guess. I don't know what they're called. But uh, in this, he's replaced them with dispensers and flame charges. And this both makes the puzzle a little bit easier and a hell of a lot harder, because it's still pretty easy to dodge the flame charges. You still have those alcoves. But the problem is the fact that the flame charges, if they hit you, they set you on fire and drain your health uh, after hitting you, as well as the damage from hitting you. And uh, the dispensers, 
have really wonky aim. Like, they'll always aim in the direction they're pointing, but it's very wild. In uh, Block to the Past, uh, arrows were used instead of flame charges, and that was a little bit easier, but it was uh, still wonky. It's just the nature of the dispensers, you can't really fix that, so I can't really blame anyone for the dispenser's wonkiness. Now, as you're seeing here, I'm just breaking pots, not doing much. Like, this is an example of why I think this dungeon is sort of boring. Because, like, in most of the rooms of the dungeon in the original game, there are at least a couple enemies in every room or so. But since there aren't that many enemies in this, it just makes it a little bit of a chore to go through. Like, it's not bad, it's fun to explore the Eastern Palace in 3D, but it could be a little bit more combat intensive. Like, I'm not talking Legend of Zelda 1 levels here, since that was pretty much all combat except for the occasional push this block puzzle, or like cracked wall puzzle, but, like see here, this is fun. You're fighting monsters and then you're solving the puzzle to get out of this place. Even though it's controlled, it's still a heck of a lot of fun, and it, even better, the spawn actually works, which is something that'll come up uh, twice later in this dungeon. Though one of those, I believe, I can't entirely fault as a glitch. But, uh, you see, that's a lot of fun. It's not fun, well, it's fun, but not too fun just going through a little labyrinth with nothing to do other than puzzles. But, uh, I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, you probably noticed that we got, uh, the two dungeon maps. Those, I think, are really- like, I don't find them useful, because aside from having the Light World dungeons pretty much memorized because I love them so much, um, they take up a heck of a lot of space in your inventory, especially the Tower of Hera, which has, like, five floors, I think, and each floor is represented by one map. Um, so I probably won't pick up the map. Like, I'll show you where it is, but I probably won't take the map with me in the Tower of Hera. But, uh, the compass doesn't really do anything either. It's, it just points to your spawn point as usual. It's just there for kicks. Um... Now, in the next couple rooms, we're going to be encountering our first anti-fairies. Yep, you can hear them. They are also known in this game as Blazes. Now, anti-fairies in the original game, they would hurt you and they would also drain your magic whenever they were on you, which was really annoying, especially in the Ice Palace, where you needed magic. But, uh, in this game, uh, Blazes will just, uh, Blazes do the same thing as fire charges, in that they can set you on fire and drain your health even after they've initially hit you. However, anti-fairies could be turned into fairies by using magic powder, and you can't do that with blazes, which is sort of a blessing and a curse at the same time. Now, soon enough here I have some kind of precognition and go to the door immediately as the blaze is about to come and attempt to destroy me. Yeah, I see, here we go. They're pretty easy to fight as long as you uh, stay around a corner and then just uh, sort of camp them that way. They're much more dangerous at longer ranges where they can uh, fly up maybe out of your reach and uh, fling fireballs at you. That's pretty much the strategy you have to use if you encounter them in this or in the actual Minecraft game. Just uh, dodge the fireballs they shoot at you, and then they'll flop down to the ground, and then you can hit them. Interestingly, you can't reflect those fireballs like you can with the ghast. Which would make the ghast a prime, uh... It would make it a good substitute for Agnahim. Then again, you'd have to fit a gas into that really tiny room. And you'll see how tiny it is uh, when we get there. Now here's one glitch. 
these pressure pads are supposed to spit out uh, four anti-fairies. That uh, they circle around a pot until you defeat all the enemies in the room, and then they fling off in all directions. But in this, for some reason, the dispensers. Every time I've played this in the older versions and in this newer version, the dispensers just don't have anything to spit out, and so they make that empty clicking noise. Um, I'm not sure if that's an oversight or if that's deliberate or anything, but. Uh, it comes up uh, once more in the dungeon. I don't see this happen often in the uh, Desert Palace, but that may be because there's so much combat in between the uh, smaller rooms that I don't really notice it. But now that we've gotten the big key, the redstone torch, uh, we can open the chest and then get ourselves the bow, the unbreaking bow. I can't really say that much about the bow. I mean, it's pretty much the same as in Minecraft. You have it, you uh, click the button, and then you uh, hold it down longer the more power you have. And then you shoot the arrow. It's not much different. There's not really any special use to it. I'm not sure how he, uh, how Amarok is going to uh, pull off the silver arrow upgrade. Since there's no upgrade to the bow in the actual game, or in Minecraft. So... Perhaps just a bow with a better enchantment? I mean, that's the best I came up with. But uh, this is the second room where uh, we have a glitch. You see those pressure pads? Those spit out a whole bunch of rupees and two blazes, which have a bit more of an advantage in this room than they did in that little corridor. However, when I went and clicked on the pressure pads, nothing spit out. No rupees, no blazes, nothing. I'm not sure whether this is because he was bug testing the uh, dispensers and forgot to refill them or something, but uh, yeah, normally they're supposed to spit out a bunch of rupees, a bunch of blue rupees, and uh, two blazes to guard them. That shows up in the actual game as well, as a small uh, room of unboomerangable rupees and uh, the two anti-fairies. Now, there's not really much else to say about the dungeon. It's pretty standard rest of the way through. The, like here in this room, this is another example of where enemies would be nice because there was always a few enemies guarding these uh, pressure pads in the original game and you had to uh, bow them to death before uh, you could safely, or at least uh, safely without danger of being hit by an enemy, uh, you could safely hit them. But, uh, another glitch shows up in this room. This next room is another marble room, where marbles are shooting out at all, uh, out of all of the walls. But, as you can see, in here it just stops after, like, one round. I have no idea what's wrong with this. It did this in the other versions, too. Or, actually, no. The very first time I played the, old the oldest version, it didn't do this and I have no idea of why it's not working now. But, uh... Yeah, when it's, uh... If and when it gets fixed, it's actually a pretty fun little room. You can go overboard with it, but, uh... Just don't be so, like, careless, and you'll be fine. But here's the fairy. Just like hearts, they restore your hunger, which means, in this game, you actually eat the fairy. All those rumors were true. But yeah, there's nothing much in this room either. In the original game, this uh, gave you two uh, armored foes you had to bow to death. Um, and then you could safely uh, get all the stuff out of the pots. But yeah, just another example of combat that would be nice if it could be added. Um, I'm pretty sure you could probably add it. I don't think torches light up this place as well as, uh, sunlight, so they could spawn. But, uh... Finally, we're coming up to the boss, and are you re are you guys ready for a boss? Because I'm ready for a boss. So, let's, let's go fight the boss, and... Well, it's supposed to be six big slimes, but obviously it, uh, screwed up again. Um... 
I kept this screw up in just so I could show you how to get out of here. It's pretty obvious anyway, but I figured I'd, it'd be a good idea to show it. So just uh, press all those pressure plates down at the same time, and then you can get out. Um, once you uh, beat the boss and finish the dungeon, there will be a chest down here with a pendant of courage, four pieces of heart, and a nice little grouping of hearts that will uh, generally keep you set for the rest of the light world uh, if you continue uh, playing at daytime all the time like I do. But uh, to make up for the boss, I've spliced in the Armos Knights, so uh, see you next time.